Hello, how is it going? It is Fake here coming at you once again with another Legends of Rune Terror video. I had a viewer share a deck with me today, Broman Sejuani. I did a little bit of research, did some backtracking to find out where I come from, and actually come from Mogwai. So this Broman Sejuani list was pretty powerful for us today, and we managed to go 8-3 and three, uh, today. As you can see, we had a 6-win six and six, uh, six win straight record, which is pretty cool. Taking uh, wins against most of the meta, showing that it's quite powerful against some of the current popular decks. You know, we took a game of Heimerdinger, which is always a great sign for a list. It's time to push Heimerdinger out. Mid-range decks are rising up. There's actually three different variants of free old Noxus decks at the moment, which is pretty insane. Free old starting to really push its tier so, so high. Anything from control to aggro, it's... Ridiculous, ridiculous. Anyway, um, shall we jump across, have a look at the cards and talk about why they're here and what they shall be doing. I just wanna say another thank you for all the support you guys have showed me on the new format for the videos. You guys have a fantastic day. Uh, good luck. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Braum, the heart of Frill World. Let's go over the, some of the cards that we have here. So obviously, Braum Sejuani, we're going to have three copies of each. I don't think you'd run this deck without him, simply because those cards themselves are quite powerful. Some lists in general, Runeterra building, won't always run three copies of each, but when they're as powerful as these guys, we are definitely going to run uh, three copies of each. So I do recommend you do run three copies. Uh, let's go over the spells really quickly, because they're probably... The most relevant uh, cards for this deck build are uh, Fury of the North, obviously maybe not as special, but very staple, powerful, free old mid-range card. The ability to kind of buff your Brom if you need to, to trade off your opponent's dudes, or even buff some weird cards like Curator and Disciple to kind of get some value from them can be quite effective for throwing your opponent off guard. Fury of the North is just kind of like becoming one of those very staple free old cards. Uh, Take Heart is going to be a three of in this list too, because we're going to be damaging our units quite regularly. That's quite an effective card it's a three mana give a unit three three it can be it's a permanent buff as well so it could be quite powerful and at burst speed you can throw your opponent off guard for sure and uh, noxian fervor transfusion we'll talk about these cards with disciple and demolitionist and curator that whole package of damaging your units uh, these are going to be your cheesy ways of dealing damage to your opponent between turns clearing boards and just taking Causing your opponent to take very ineffective trades, and this this deck's all about kind of like those uh, combination tricks. And Noxian Fervor is literally the only fast speed spell we have. Everything else is burst, so it's very difficult, and you always kind of have the advantage against your opponent attacking. Uh, you can sometimes use these cards in the offensive too. You just gotta write, find the right situations, play around the right cards, and you can really abuse your opponent. Uh, Elixir of Iron also just proves to be even more valuable in this list than the Ash Sejuani one because we get a lot more value from our units surviving. So Elixir of Iron is just a really great one mana burst spell. We'll give a, a unit plus two HP for the round. It can definitely be, uh, be clutch in moments. And it's also very relevant too because the curve of this deck is uh, we have this six two drops and three uh, one drops in Omen Hawk. So sometimes you're gonna consider keeping cards like Curator and Kindly Tavern Keeper in your opening hand. Curator being a reasonable keep, you probably don't keep Tavern Keeper most of the time because this deck, you don't need to mulligan super aggressively, but you can if you find a hand like that's like Curator and Elixir of Iron, I sometimes keep that unless we have to mulligan super aggressively, which is usually only against aggro. But I've noticed that you're not always gonna hit those draws if you mulligan aggressively so keeping cards like curator with a transfusion or keeping cards like disciple 100 percent of the time by the way uh, with transfusion these are really good keeps uh omen hawk is going to be the one drop in this deck it's just a super crazy powerful free old deck it boosts your win rate dramatically if you draw it so don't don't feel too bad if you don't draw it it's still good the deck's going to perform quite effectively but it's just a nice bonus to every now and then get the omen hawk in the early game and really cheese your opponent i kindly to have a keeper proving to be quite a strong mid-range free old card now. Three mana, three, three, heal your Nexus for three, or heal your unit for three too, don't forget, so you can heal your units, uh, which can be quite powerful in some matchups, especially against control, where board uh, board presence is much more powerful than HP. Uh, you can definitely consider doing that as well. Crimson Awakener, damaging units, damage Braum, get some more dudes, uh, abuse the uh, Demolitionist, as, uh, sorry, abuse the Curator and the Disciple as much as possible. Really cheese your opponent, push more lethal. K to the Arm seems like a bit of a boner card for Mogwai, as well as Tusk Raider. Uh, K to the Arm is actually quite effective at the moment. It's fitting into not more decks than just this deck in particular. It fits quite well into the Darius variant as well. So that card's proven to be really effective and granting overwhelm to units can just allow you to push more damage. And this deck definitely plays aggressive enough to use cards like K to the Arm quite effectively. 
in the one-off of Tusk Raider because if you have a Versa Control deck and manage to get that Plunder off, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with decks like War Mother Control, etc. But that's the deck, guys. Uh, very powerful. Once again, shout-outs to Mogwai, I guess. I did a bit of backtracking to find out where the deck come from. And it definitely, most definitely come from him. So you guys can go check him out. That's the list. Let's go have a couple games. <clears throat> That's alright, you do your thing. I'll just be chilling. Yay! Omen Hawk. Love to see it. I get so excited. This is a boost our win rate. GG by the way, and yay for plat one. Thank you, dude. Thank you, my dude. That feels awkward. Just a little more for Damien rank. Yes, we are very close to Damien rank. Smell that? I fight to cooking. I actually think I played Demolitionist here, unfortunately. I gets good traits against his attacks, doesn't it? We do get a proc on Sejuani, but because it's buffed up, that's the reason why we're playing it now. You can almost stop him from swinging. I think that's completely worth it. Let's attack. Hope you can steadily get the diamond. Yeah, I'm not gonna rush it, hey. I'm super chill at the moment. Because my main objective is to get the content. Get the new decks, play the different stuff. If I get diamond along the way, that's superb. I'm going to float the three mana here for Brom. How do I feel about him going wide here? He's obviously going to open attack, right? Oh, okay. Brom's super good against him right now. Transfusion is strictly better here. It clears two units, keeps my Braum alive. I don't get to clear this tracker, but the Transfusion does so much more. I jumped immediately to Noxium Fervor, realizing quickly that Transfusion clearly did a lot more. I just open attack here. Braum is such a good anti mid-range tool as well. Good call, yeah. That was just one of those slow down the gameplay. Actually have a moment to think about it. Does this mean I should do anything weird? No, I should probably just chill for now, I guess. Should I develop anything here? Do I ever just like kind of do a, a risky... um? A risky demolitionist. I mean, what do I get punished by? Another single combat. I'm gonna develop a 6 6 instead. This is gonna be the play. Even if he has single combat. If he has single combat, you could always use it with uh, Misfortune anyway. Plus, this is a 6 6 body, so that's pretty insane. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really tough for him to do as much. And if he develops Sejuani next turn, he's not even playing Sejuani, apologies. He's a build water Demacia list. These are moments that make me tense. I feel very comfortable at the moment. He has two cards in hand, Arcanus. That's one of the powerful things to take note of when you play. Think about how many cards they have in hand. And it'll make you quickly realize that you have a huge advantage. And realize what cards you have in your hand as well. So what's my counter to this play? I can most likely just frostbite the Genevieve. That's gonna be reasonable. It limits the rest of the plays for this turn. 
I might eventually make more accounts on different servers. Maybe eventually. This makes sense because of Scout. Kind of a strange play here. Well, it doesn't actually level up his misfortune. Lol. He only attacked once, didn't he? So that's three out of four. So we definitely want to Noxian further, clear the misfortune. We'll use the Braum as well. See what he kind of does here. Okay, we want to pretty much commit to clearing misfortune. That's pretty strong. Oh, this is a plunder card, by the way. Holy shit. I think it was a, a couple games ago where I played this without even plundering. We all knew he had something big up his sleeve. The one, the one scare card was Rally. When slash how does Plunder activate? When you've dealt damage to them. A card triggers when you've dealt damage to your opponent's nexus this turn. This is okay. Demolitionist is a bit of a brick, but we have an elixir of iron. Goodbye. Bye bye, Arcanus. Have fun with your IRL life. Demolitionist for the 2 3 body. It's pretty good. Now we immediately develop this. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Pilfered goods. That's my favorite card. First things first, I'm gonna open. Yes! He whiffed his fucking. He whiffed his buff. Let the Crimson Curator train begin. For 
Oh, more bent to kill. Oh, I'm always going to take this trade. I'm down with this, 100%. There should be no counterplay here, right? Holy shit. If I can get one more board trick. So on turn six, hang on, what deck are we playing? He's roughly sitting on Vengeance. He could also be playing... The Bascus Riot buff is real. You should try it. Ah, oh, there we go, nice win. That was looking pretty good for us anyway. I haven't personally tried it yet. I think I played it once. And I think I just really butchered my plays. With my crab top, it's hard to alt tab. Fair enough. We'll even just take the time to do a little quick research. Well, now you know what uh, Shadow Wilds plus uh, Noxus is at least. Now at least you know that. I shouldn't be too greedy. I should keep this decent curve. I would love to find an Omen Hawk, but yeah, I shouldn't be too greedy with my hand. Kicking Braum might have been acceptable as well. We have a good chance of drawing into him. But having him in my hand now doesn't feel too bad either. The only card I'm really looking for is Omen Hawk at that point. We are attacking evens too, so missing the one drop isn't too painful. Uh, Darius Lucian, Noxus, Damasio actually is kind of interesting. I'm happy to make this trade. But he won't do it. Fair enough. Pretty good counter play. So he goes wide against us. If he has another one drop, dude, that'd be kind of cringe. So he's probably running Darius at the top end on this like kind of aggro Demacia list. I guess it's just gonna be Braum, right? Let us get going. Would have loved to have had extra mana here. One more mana and this turns a blowout. Whoa, hang on. Basilisk Rider. So he's heavy into Noxus with a splash of Demacia. Most likely for single combat and um, Lucian. Interesting. Still gonna make this trade though. Heavily on Noxus with Demacia Splash. See, this is a, this is a moment where I would go out of my way to go search up this deck, just to see exactly what he's playing. I'm assuming it's single combat and Lucian. That's it. Uh, deck library. Okay, Lucian. Darius. Lucian Darius aggro. Can't be this list, because it doesn't run. Let's go popular. What's my uh, safe play here? He's going to grant overwhelm to a lot of idiots. <laughs> I actually don't think I play anything. I think I use my combat tricks to figure out the turn. Way. 
Wait, what's happening? How's my Lucian, my... Why is Brom dying here? It's a 7-2, right? Oh, double attack. Oh, shit. Whoops, that's a bit of a fucking misplay. Um, it's okay. We'll manage. That was so weird. Fuck. Double attack, of course. Double attack. Fuck. Making the dead dead. Granting overwhelm to Lucian is actually crazy. That's why that's why I didn't kill him the first attack. That was wild. I have no counterplay to Darius now. Or Kato for that fact. Big misplays. So who do you buff here? Leave no survivors. Let's talk about your death. Prove your worth. So it's probably not naturally running. Uh, I'm gonna lose to Rally. It could be Rally as his card, actually. Should hopefully help me beat Rally. Nice. Bad. So I think he might be rallying against me, right? This feels like a very much a rally turn. Okay, apparently not. I have Fury of the North here. Can that do anything for me? Assessor. Shit. Fury is lethal. I can go as far as to buff my disciple too. Yeah, this is smarter.
Noxian Fervor? He is a full Noxus list. There's a chance that if he develops next turn, I can play Awakener. Buffing this makes the most sense. Okay. It's a reasonable play. I still have my Cater though on field, so that's good. These Crimson Awakeners are going to be clutch. Okay, so if he goes for an open attack, I might be dead. That didn't hit its allegiance buff. Oh, thank you so much. Could we possibly get any more lucky? Holy shit. Oh, that feels awkward. Now that forces a development, I think. Maybe not. Oh. Oh, he's still dead. He's still dead. Still dead, dude. Mm. I apologize to your parents. Well played. I thought about keeping the three drop. I really did. I think we need to mulligan a bit more aggressively against Heimerdinger though, to be fair. I don't think I made a mistake. Dude, what is this? Ah, uh, Come on, bruh. Seriously. What are these drawers? Nuts draws. Should have kept the three drop. Should have kept the three drop. Should have kept the elixir of iron as well as the three drop. That's all in hindsight though. How could we have known? We have uh, six two drops and one uh, three one drops so we did what we could. His Vi would not be that leveled. So I should always develop here. He could easily pass the turn, which I can't afford for him to actually do that. And next turn we should develop, for sure. Develop Sejuani. Because I'm kind of like, I get my ass kicked a little bit by um, Will of Aronia, but it stops him from developing I'm hitting it comfortably, so Sejuani should be the play here most of the time. It makes it very awkward for him to play I'm because we're going to be pushing a shit ton of damage. Shit ton. Whew. 
That's a lot of damage. Force him to Will of Ionia, my Crimson Awakener as well. Wow, this is really strong right now. Holy shit. Ironically, our clunky hand kind of in the end was quite strong. At least this turn right here. Holy shit. Like, what do you do? Do you will the Crimson Awakener? I should use Transfusion here. Or maybe Noxium Fervor is strictly better. I might argue Noxium Fervor. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of reasons to actually transfusion instead. Okay, let's see if I can get double will out of him. There's a few ways to play that turn. I think I'll hold back the Noxian and Demolitionist in hand for some sort of cheesy lethals. I hate to see another will here. I guess I would hate to see another will still. Big damage. Holy shit. That puts me in ranges to kind of like a demolitionist, which is pretty cool. With disciple, etc. Oh, I, I think we win now. I think it's unless you open attacks right now. We should just win. Cool, he develops too. Um, we need to essentially use a get excited here. Or a will, and then I can pretty much play Noxian Feather for the win. So the transfusion ended up being the right line for guaranteeing a higher chance of lethal for winning. So we see a deny right, and then I can just pretty much do this. And drop a Shen emote while we're at it. Easy clap. Wow, I really thought our hand was going to be clunky, but it turns out that performs super well against Heimendinger. Let's right, see how we go on this one. I do think this one's probably more important to definitely mulligan aggressively. Hopefully we don't get too unlucky with our draws. This is decent. Hello. Why are you sad facing me? Okay. So he could, could, because he chose to not block there, I can play Typhon Keeper.
feels okay, I guess. Best we're gonna get in terms of trades. Do I ever need to trade off the Ruthless Raider instead? It has less attack, so no. Braum feels okay here. Okay. He might be looking to develop uh, Darius next turn. I could have damaged my Brawl Mayor there actually. That's okay. I said you wanted this. Because it's actually already leveled, it's kind of okay for us. What's the scary cards here? Wow, right, this is a really important turn. Okay, let me think. You can just develop more units, probably play decimates. I could double transfusion this turn, that's gonna do something for me. He needs exactly Noxie and Fervor. Can I beat? Man, that's not Noxie and Fervor. Okay, it's Transfusion most likely gonna be getting played this turn. Probably on the Sedge. Okay, let's try that. He needs exactly Noxie and Fervor. And then you'd use a disciple to trade off my disciple. Aiden 3 looks goddamn great.